Drama in D.C., a possible staff shakeup at the White House. White House Chief of Staff John Kelly could be on his way out. His relationship with the president has reportedly soured. Our Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief Ross Palumbo is at the White House now with a top story at 5 o'clock. Ross. Well, Larry and Calvin, we begin tonight with breaking news regarding the president's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen. You'll remember he pled guilty back in August to tax evasion and campaign finance violation. Well, federal prosecutors just a few moments ago filed papers in court recommending substantial prison time for Michael Cohen, anywhere from 51 to 63 months. That's four to five years behind bars. Remember, we were led to believe that Cohen was cooperating with prosecutors just a few days ago. Cohen insisting that he deserved zero prison time, but now prosecutors coming back saying he actually should be in jail from 51 to 63 months, meaning he did not cooperate as much as we were led to believe. Meanwhile, the president just returning here to the White House from Kansas City. There's no one more capable or more qualified for this role. He the deserves. president in Kansas City praising his new pick for attorney general, William Barr, along with acting AG Matt Whitaker. Bill is supremely qualified, highly respected at the Department of Justice, and will continue to support the men and women in blue. It comes nearly a month since Jeff Sessions was forced to resign as head of the Justice Department. Trump making the announcement just this morning. One of the most respected jurists in the country, highly respected lawyer. I did not know him for until recently when I went through the process of looking at people. And he was my first choice from day one. Barr has already served as attorney general, working for President George H.W. Bush in the early 90s. And during that time, he was Robert Mueller's boss. Now, if confirmed, he'll oversee the special counsel and the Russia investigation. Thank but he's already said in the past much. he believes there's more to investigate on the infamous uranium deal involving Hillary Clinton than potential collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. Meanwhile, sources now saying the special counsel has questioned Chief of Staff General John Kelly about the president and possible obstruction of justice. Sources also now saying Kelly is expected to resign in the coming days. Trump and Kelly don't even speak anymore, and Trump is already looking for his replacement. I particularly want to take the opportunity, though, to thank... It could be a revealing day in the Russia investigation. Two court filings are due from Mueller's team and are expected to provide more insight about former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort and President Trump's former lawyer Michael Cohen. The documents set to be filed in Washington will likely explain how Cohen cooperated with Mueller and why Mueller accused Manafort of lying and breaking his plea deal. Take your questions. Although and the president also announcing the nomination of State Department uh, spokesperson like Heather Nauert to, to be U.N. ambassador, replacing Nikki Brazil, Haley, stepping down at the end of the year. She's very talented, very smart, very quick. And I think she's going to be respected by all. Now it began at the State Department just last year with zero government or foreign policy experience. She's worked in the past for ABC News and for Fox. Also happening today in the wake of former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson saying in an interview in Houston that the president is, quote, undisciplined, doesn't read, and repeatedly attempts to do illegal things. The president firing back in a scathing tweet just about an hour ago. Take a look at this. Among other things, the president saying that Tillerson is, quote, as dumb as a rock. I couldn't get rid of him fast enough. He was lazy as hell. Of course, that begs the question, why did the president hire Rex Tillerson to begin with. Just a few moments ago on the south lawn of the White House, the president just landing. We asked him about that. Take a listen. Mr. President, do you still have confidence in Alex Acosta? Are you getting rid of Kelly? Acosta, if Tillerson was lazy as hell, why'd you hire him? Why did you hire Tillerson if he's so lazy? Mr. President, you still Wanna have not enough jokes? All right, the president choosing not to say anything more about Tillerson, Lauren Calvin after that fiery tweet. And, of course, we'll have much more on Alex Acosta coming up just a little bit later in the show. All right, so much coming to a head on this Friday evening. Ross Palumbo right there live for us in D.C. Thank you. Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee interviewing James Comey behind closed doors today. That session wrapping up just moments ago as the former FBI director was called in to answer questions 
as Republicans argue that FBI and Justice Department officials were biased against Donald Trump as they started their investigation into his campaign ties with Russia. As a private citizen, how do you think Bob Mueller's investigation is going? As a private citizen, as someone who knows the justice system, I see it proceeding incredibly quickly and very, very professionally. But the most important indication of that is you don't know anything about it except when he files something in court, and that's the way it should be. Well, Democrats have said they will end that investigation into Comey once they assume control of the House this upcoming January. Back here at home, we're learning two teenagers who escaped from a detention center over the weekend had help. 18-year-old Tatiana Gonzalez has been arrested on unlawful harboring charges. Police say she allowed them to stay at her Hialeah apartment since Sunday. After spending several days on the run, those two boys, 14-year-old Jonathan Jacobo and 16-year-old Gregory Ruiz, were just recaptured today in Hialeah. 15-year-old Jason Posey, a third teenager who escaped, was caught earlier this week. Authorities say the trio broke out of the Miami Youth Academy in Kendall late Sunday through a classroom window. Again, all three have since been captured.